Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. As you can see, I'm joined by the uh, the Yall Mafia. Uh, the Exile Dub is joining us as always, Tommy Lyons. And Barry Drake, who will no doubt mention Yall quite a few times in the next uh, hour or so, is also joining us. Barry, you're very welcome indeed. Um, we were just talking about off-air. A lot of racing to look back on this weekend. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, so many tracks around the country have, you know, high-profile competitions um, on at the moment. And, you know... Um, some great performances over the course of the weekend and uh, no doubt we'll touch on many of those um, over the, the next hour or so. Yeah, Tommy, we, we have action from the likes of Limerick, Cork, Shelburne, Newbridge, uh, Kilkenny, uh, <laughs> even mentioned Toaster, Tralee. Uh, there's, there's loads going on. Yeah, you'll be busy, Ian. I'll hardly get a word in now today, thank God. Relief, <laughs> relief for your listeners, Ian. Yeah, somehow I doubt that. Um, let, let's, <laughs> let's, let's start with one of the finals. Um, the Limerick Oaks, um, always a good guide to the upcoming uh, Sporting Press Irish Oaks. And Bally McDanica was a non-runner. We did touch upon it last week. We mentioned that she may well be a non-runner. Uh, rumours is she, she was in season. Um, in her absence would suggest that was the case. And Short Grip was sent off the 7-4 to four favourite. I must say, before Bally McDanica was withdrawn, I had her in around 5-4, to 11-8 to eight myself, Short Grip. So without Bally McDanica, I would have assumed she'd have been even money or, or even shorter, maybe odds on. Um, the seven Seven of four looked very generous after about five strides. Tommy Lyons, short grip. She was a, a sensational runner-up in the juvenile derby last year. She really is franking the Drooby's flight line form. She looked very special last year. She looked very special in her semi-final, and once again, twenty-eight eleven in the final. This was just a, a very professional run. This lady, she has a big, big future. Well, it's it's more special, I think, for the fact that she was off for so long. And then she 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 got a bit of trouble and finished last in Limerick there on the 20th of April. But then two huge runs. She's come a huge way in a very short space of time. Um, the run the other night was 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 just was almost perfect. She popped out and did really well, 28-11. And the funny thing is that the way she's been progressing in the last few weeks, you'd imagine she might progress a little bit further. I mean, if you're looking back, and I know we haven't seen flight line, but like that line of form, Drupy flight line in, in the juvenile derby last year. Is like is right out of the top drawer. I mean, absolutely and utterly out of the top drawer. So you'd imagine. I mean, we talked in the last few weeks, Ian, about there's a bitch can win the Oaks, there's a bitch can win the Oaks, there's a bitch still can win the Oaks. Yeah, look, well, look, look, be... look, look back at that juvenile derby final. You know, Drupy Zelda was third. We've seen how well yeah. she ran in the select stakes, yeah. unmatched. Like she's an absolute mm. class performer. We saw her down in the Cork Oaks. Highview Splash did a huge run at Shelburne Park the other night. And last of the six was Balnikil Alf. You know, and he's yeah. absolutely flying <laughs> in sprints at present, one of the top sprinters in the country. Yeah, it was just a sensational juvenile derby final. And as you say, the form really is stacking up. Yeah, like she's, and, and again, like I say, I just think, I just, I, I, don't, I don't know where, I don't know where now, it's actually probably going to be as hot an Oaks as there's been. And we've been, we've been banging the drum about how good the bitches have been for, it seems like three or four years at least, at least, I would say. And this, this might even be better than ever. Yeah, the only the only issue is there are quite a few of them going to the UK, uh, which is yeah. you know that's yeah, going to yeah. just. But again, the ones going to the UK are probably the right ones to go to the UK. They probably realise they're not razor sharp, you know, because the five mm. two five yard trip at Shelburne Park, you need to be absolutely, you know, f you know, you need to be so professional in those early yards, being able to get around the corner, or else the opposite scale, a huge huge finisher, which we've seen have run well in the Oaks in recent yeah. years too. Yeah, but when the quality is so high, which it is. That's when you re need, really need to be razor sharp. If there's not as much depth and the quality is not quite as high, you might get away with it. You may be able to bob and weave and get past, you know, beaten dogs and kind of our beaten bitches and, and and keep qualifying and have a chance in the final. But like when it's so high, you just can't afford to make mistakes. When when, when bitches are going to be doing, like I, I'd be surprised if twenty eight seconds isn't broken during the during the Oaks. Yeah, uh, Barry, you know, twenty eight eleven fifteen ninety three off a of four oh eight. You know, like, like that's that's Kirby winning form. You know what I mean? Like this is how good short grip is. We've seen how she can compete against the dogs. This was her at her very best again at Limerick on Saturday night. And while she's only had a handful of races, less than a handful of races this year, all evidence would suggest she 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 must be disputing, if not favoured, for the Oaks coming up. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, it was a stunning run. Um, as good as it gets, really. And you know, obviously, both of you hit the nail in the head there with the the drunk his <laughs> flight form uh, getting within a length that night and you know arguably the, the best performance of the year last year when, when clocking 27.93 so um, you know she's a real real 
um, classy performer and uh, one of the, the the quickest in the country. And you know, once she got it right at the traps early and, and won the all important early lead, it was it was game over. And um, yeah, a joy to watch her in full flight there um, on Saturday night. And uh, you know, they have a lot to look forward to with her. They do. If she continues to trap like that, you know, it's going to take a bomb to keep her out of the frame in the in the in the juvenile derby. We saw her not leading in the final in the juvenile derby. She's staying on stoutly. You know, another few strides. She had to check stride, check her check sides. I think on the run in, if I remember rightly, um, she she could well be. You know, very very hard to keep out of frame. We have to give a mention to the runner up, the Newport yeah. uh, Pier. What a versatile performer this lady is for for the Mullins Curtain Syndicate. They've had some crack over the last few years. The Mullins Curtain Syndicate. They've had some really really talented types, mostly bitches. And uh, this is another lady, Newport Pier. Like when you consider she has what she is thirty two twenty three for the six hundred around um, Limerick. She has forty one uh, thirty four for the seven fifty at Shelburne Park. She's a, a forty uh, fifty seven there. 40 the 87 minus the 30 at Kilkenny um, and here she is doing 28-20 in the final or 28-21 in the final of the Limerick Oaks she is that type of bitch if they decide to go down the Oaks route with her again she'll be finishing faster than most she could be the type that sneaks through a few rounds so versatile she was 10-1 to 1 the other evening but that's more because of racing style not because of talent um, Annie on fire who was a very impressive semi-final winner was back in third she's beaten three and a half lengths but she's doing 28-46 it was just it was just a cracking final Raph friend Castle Ivy Jind and, and Ballymac uh, Wendy was was at the tail uh, sadly it uh, didn't happen for her but but short grip yeah she's the one to take out of the contest and Tommy it, you know if you were picking two or three for the for the Oaks she'd, she'd have to be amongst them wouldn't she oh, she <clears throat> she has to be she has to be after that because as I said to him repeat myself Ian but I think she's, she'd improve a little bit again she had 28 taken on the clock in Shelburne already yeah. Um, it, it could be a ridiculously hot Oaks. And I know some of you say some of them are going across the water and whatever, but like it's still going to be red hot. Yeah, the ones going across the water though are the more five fifty yard yeah, types. Know, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Like as you say, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a red hot oaks. And we'll get to Shelburne Park now in a moment because it's this time of year where, you know, I don't know how they time it, but so many bitches are coming back from seasonal rest and you see bitches, you go, Oh God, I forgot about her. We haven't seen her in six months. She's capable of doing twenty eight ten around Shelburne Park. And all of a sudden, she's arriving back. She's a 29, 28-70 trial. And you go, oh, God, is she right? Is she ready? Bang. Away she goes. 28-15 in the first round of the Oaks. You're going, ah, I'm sorry we doubted you. Um, yeah, there, there's going to be loads of flying bitches around. One that isn't taking part, I will say, this morning. Um, obviously, Bonnie McDonough, it must be a, a serious doubt if she is in season. Um the fact that she was a non-runner the other night would suggest she's not going to be there. Boyle Sports Coco is out as well. She was getting ready for an English Derby Challenge. Picked up a small problem at Shelburne a couple of weeks ago. And then there were said, well, an extra week. Well, let's just keep her to Shelburne. Go for the Oaks. She came in season. You know, that's that's the way it goes, I'm, I'm afraid. So, as I said to Loris this morning, maybe a Derby campaign rather than an Oaks campaign. Uh, she'll have plenty of time to get ready for that. Um, let's move on. Uh, Shelburne Park on Saturday night there were some fantastic performances but the highlight of the of the card was was certainly the semi-finals of the Shelburne champion 550 and uh, both heats won in tremendous fashion um, Silverhill Adam losing his maiden tag in 2981 and Karma King winning in 2966 five wins on the bounce as I've said last two weeks no talk of progressive or improving he's now there he, he's amongst the fastest in the, in the land. If you look at the clocks in the early part of the card, um, there were some good runs, some decent runs. But I would suggest the track was getting slower as the night went on. Um, they cut the track up earlier in the week. And if Karma King isn't doing faster than 29.66, the way he won, I'm a, I'm a Dutchman. You know, this could have easily been a 29.36 run in the height of the summer. You know, that's, the, that's what I'd be expecting if he produced that similar run, let's say, you know, in September, October time. Obviously, Derby's considerably later this year, but again, 29.66, but he wins eight lengths from Swords Hero. Swords Hero scarcely gets a touch. You know, he does 29.58 the previous week. He's in 30.22 this week. I just think the track was getting that touch slower towards the end of the evening. Like Trinity Jr. gets clear passage in the finale, does 29.96. So I think the Carmack King run 29.66 is certainly better for better than that. Um, Tommy, he just seems to be doing everything right. He's a hell of a nice dog. A hell of a nice dog, and and obviously obviously one of the fastest in the country at the moment. But I would say when I was doing this the preview for this race on uh, on Friday, I was concerned about the six dog in the early pace whose name I can't remember. You'll remember. Charles Na- Charles Na- 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 yeah, Charles Na- Masai. 
massive early pace. I was just concerned that he might fly out, get in the way of Carmack King, and that might set us up for the inside dogs. And that's the way I was trying, just trying to read the race. So, it, it, you know, when, when Carmack King was going to be an obvious favourite, I was looking for an angle to take him on. I thought Sid Z- Zafiro might actually be able to tuck in behind a couple of dogs and, and, and pick them off late, maybe. Um, he actually broke exceptionally well, probably broke too well, um, not for the longer term. You want him to break as quickly as possible. But just on this occasion, he got the bit of a bump with Swords, with Sword Hero, I'd say. Actually ran quite well in the end. I did think coming off the last bend, maybe Sid Zafiro should have picked up Sword Hero. He went by him into the escape and did kind of right things after the line and ran quite well. But I think there was a, it was a huge factor. The eight lane win is impressive and I wouldn't take anything away from Carmack King. But I do think that the the fact that the, the Tarzna um, Masai was out of the race did change the complexion of the race and actually probably made him a bit of a value bet, Karma King, then because there was nothing to hold him up on the outside. Whereas the inside duo, I, I had written this, they were most likely going to clash because I think Swords Hero is more of a middle runner. Previous week, flashing yeah, out from trap yeah. four, going up reasonably straight. This week again, yeah. one and two. You know, we've only seen Sid Zafiro from traps one or two. And his only defeat came from trap two. You know, like he he wants to be on the fence and two or the Swords Hero dog wants to be in the middle. So if he had switched those traps, it could have been a different contest. I would have expected Sid Zafiro then to be a, a bigger challenger than he ended up being. But as it was, yeah. Karma King got loose. We know how strong he is. Like he looks like a dog that will continue to go five, seven, five, six hundred yards if you asked him to do so. Um, big run, just lots to like about him. It, it, it's a quite a fast litter. Uh, I think a couple of them actually impressed over the last week as well. In good time, did the track record at Tralee the previous weekend. Uh, May, May Bazada ran well as well the other evening in the Newbridge Derby, uh, staying on very strongly. So obviously a very talented litter. Um, Barry Carmack Car- King, when you're looking for a dog for, let's say, a, a, a likes of a derby or a champion stakes or something like that around Shelburne Park, this is the type of dog that sort of fits the brief. You know, he's a good starter. He's good early speed. He's good down the back and he stays. Um, yes, there will be dogs that will do each of those those elements probably a little bit better but in terms of all round ability he's very much an all-rounder yeah without a doubt look he's faultless at the moment um he's clapped up i suppose some you know magnificent times in recent weeks he's made it five wins in the trash uh beaten some really talented sorts in recent weeks and you know Owen mckenna has another really really nice sort in his hands here now of course um won by timmy carmody who has you know produced some good grounds over the years and i suppose when when they send one to the likes of you know Owen mckenna i think that that's enough because um i've seen them um you know handle some nice grounds in tralee in recent years so they obviously think the world of of this ground and uh Kermit king has certainly done the business in, in recent times and uh, it's exciting times ahead they'll be aiming um, him at all the big competitions not out over the course of the next couple of months and uh it'll be hard to beat this week i would imagine yeah um Obviously enough, the the trap draw wasn't up for the final online. Uh, I found it this morning. Barry Barry Call had 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 um tweeted out the other evening. Sid Zafiro's in trap one in the final. That will make a huge difference to him. But again, Carmack King in trap five. That's where he goes up. There, there's a distinct. There's not an awful lot of early speed in the competition. Is the one thing I would point out. Um, looking just at the contest again, Carmack King. While he every, he was every bit as impressive as you know, as we've spoken of. You'd have to be a little bit disappointed by Sora's hero. Like he's three lengths off him at the second bend. He's beaten eight. Um, Sid Zafiro, I can forgive. I, I like him a lot. I think he's really improving. Obviously, he stayed on well. He didn't get the clearest of passages into the opening corner. Um, he will improve for it. And again, that trap one draw will make a huge difference to him. But just a little bit disappointed with Karma King. Like the others, we, we didn't mention Scooby Pacemaker, Norris Ben finished fi- fourth and fifth. They could never really get involved. Scooby Pacemaker just struggles to hold his pitch into the corner. I think I think that's that's it. I don't, I'm not sure if I can, you can actually see it in the video or something. Maybe um, I, I I do recall Barry called in commentary saying that that um, uh, these three will qualify. So I'm not sure what exactly happened in yeah. behind, but there was obviously a bit of bumping. Like they're fast dogs. Uh, it's going to be pacemaker. Pacemaker wouldn't wouldn't be a, an entirely dissimilar greyhound to Sid Zafiro in the sense that uh, it can go up reasonably well, but stays well as well. Uh, you know, stays sees out the trip nicely. Um, yeah, I, I, interesting final. Yes, you're right. I mean, when you look at the other semi final, I think, I think the winner Silver Hill Adam, who was, who was a maiden, as you said, a five race maiden going into the race, did a three fifty something, three fifty four in lead. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not lightning. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's probably left there for Karma King to lead all the way. Uh, but I just do like Sid Zafiro as a dog. I think he's entitled to develop. I think he's going to be. I think he's a dog that will that will peak later in the year and probably. At, yeah. Hopefully, no, no, McKenna, it'll be Derby time. 
Yeah. Nice pedigree. Um, <laughs> it could be said. Okay. Obviously, he's son of Droopy Ciro, uh, Droopy Sydney, should I say, uh, out of Susie Sapphire. And uh, what a superstar she was. She improved for her first four, four or five starts. Have no fear. Um, there's every chance her 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 progeny will do so. And we'll speak about another one of them a little bit later on. Um, onto that opening semi final. You mentioned Silver Hal Adam, Tommy. I've been a fan. I mentioned him a few times in the early rounds in Tralee. I thought he was showing loads of pace and strength. But he has very much looked in recent times more of a five seven five six hundred yard greyhound. When he got off the front, they said, "Right, go on, gallop clear." Uh, but Maraid's Prince is very fast. Um, he he probably does lack the yard into the corner that you need. But when he turned as close as he did, you know, it was a, it was going to be a good contest. Um, in in truth, Silverhill Adam sort of held him. It was a comfortable half length. Um, but a fine display. But again, that twenty nine eighty one, you would be expecting, uh, Silverhill Adam to certainly do a 2950 off the front you know that that's what i'm saying about the track i just just was a bit disappointed with the time rage prince like he is a, a 2950 dog you know he has it on his card he gets his you know a clear run as he's often going to get um in second spot and, and back in third Caracino, he just has to find his trapping boots he's shown loads of pace and loads of strength but he needs he's going to need to be sharper early no question about it um whether he is going to be the the, the superstar that i once thought he was going to be i don't know He's still developing. He's still loads of pace, but just don't know if, if it's going to happen into the opening corner for him. Uh, against the real top-class greyhounds in the derby later in the year, he's going to need to be going up at least two lengths faster, uh, and that's an issue. Uh, Barry Silverhill, Adam, obviously very fast greyhound. We've known how strong he's been. Um, this was only a six start. I, you know, He was certainly amongst the fastest maidens in the country ahead of Saturday night. He's a maiden no longer. Yeah, definitely. Look, he caught the eye, as you said, on more than one occasion um, when kind of coming from off the pace. So, you know, once he got it right early and slipped around in front, uh, you know, that 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 was the winning of the race. And um, he stuck to his task well. So, yeah, I'm sure the connections with Eugene Buckley and Trainer Graham Holland will be delighted that he's got off the mark now and he'll be hoping to build on that going forward. But, yeah, nice performance for sure. Yeah, Tommy? Yeah, I think I look at, I think he's a type of dog that, that Graham Holland excels with. The ones that he that you need to give time, and he does give time to. He looked at a work in progress, obviously below in Tralee, um, and 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 yeah, he was still catching the eye. Um, this is a nice little way. Like I said, three fifty four, as if it was disparaging a bit that it was really slow. I, it came from a three sixty nine the previous week, three sixty one. They're slow. Three fifty four is not fast, not lighting by any means. But the track is funny at the moment. I can't really yeah. read and, and exactly. And Carmack King does a three fifty one. Like you would have said, that was a three forty four. Like you know what I mean. And even and even and even Carmack King going back over the last couple of weeks. I think I don't know if his best might only be three forty eight or something. So it's not yeah. like they're exactly flying out at the moment. Um. So like, I, the, this is a dog that that, that will progress. Um. I would expect him to develop into probably a, a leading candidate for the Derby. You wouldn't say it right now. I mean, he's a long way from that at the moment. But I think he's just the type of dog that that. that that uh, that Graham excels with. Um, I think the toughest part about that race was was the commentary with Prince Nassim and Marais Prince in second and third most of the way. In fairness to Barry Call, he didn't get he didn't get tongue tied. He did a good job on it. Yeah, Marais Prince, Prince Nassim, uh, Karakino back in third in the end. Um, it, there's nothing more really to say about that contest. Just looking at the draw for the final: Sid Zafiro's in one, Silver Adam, Karakino, Swords Hero, Karma King, Raids Prince. You'd assume Karma King would be a pretty short favourite. Um, Sid Zafiro might just challenge Karakino for second favouritism, just given the fact that he has the draw in his favour. Karakino is going to need to find his trapping boots, as as I've said a couple of times already. Um, Karma King though will be a, a pretty warm favourite. Yeah, with 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 the, with the drawing, actually, it'll be interesting because without without the the aid of sections all around the tracks that some obviously some people do use, um, I don't have access to them, but it'll be interesting to find out where Karma King is ahead of Sid Zafiro at the moment, and where the improvement will have to come with either of them or both of them or whatever, um, because you you'd hope look at that draw that Sid Zafiro could get a clear run along the inside. And if yeah, that's the absolutely. case, it'll just be very yeah, it'll just be very interesting to see how that that one there. Uh, it's funny out. when you see Sid Zafiri saw his pedigree, and I saw him leading one or two nights in Shelby and thinking maybe you know this is the early speed we're going to see, and he's he's going to be a real early pacer. He he looks more of a five fifty yard greyhound than a five five two five yard greyhound. Oh yeah, you know, and and given his pedigree, that's not what you would be expecting. But yeah, there's yeah. no question he's loads of strength. I have a feeling he will sharpen up considerably too. Um, but yeah, nice dog, well drawn on the fence. I think um, Karma King will will. 
certainly be favoured and will be getting my nod, no question about it. But it's just not quite as cut and dry as as, as you you know some would some might feel. Yeah, I, I feel his run the other night was just just a bit puppish, um, Sizafiro. I think when he got the bit of trouble, like, he wasn't able to 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 overcome it. Actually, if you watch, uh, the, very much the, at at different stages of the careers, have a look at Trinity Junior the other night. Um, in the first fifty yards, not like that's experience that got him between those dogs and up into the bend, up into the bend. Like what, that's a joy to watch. If anybody wants to watch and understand or to 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 really enjoy what Greyhound racing is about, just watch Trinity Junior's effort to get to the front. Have it look like he had no room whatsoever, and that's where Sid Zafir and all of these other young dogs that are going to develop. That um, I think that it's just his run with puppish. Where what I mean by that is that I don't think he could recover from the trouble quickly enough. That's just experience. That's just just a dog developing. A, you know, at this stage of his career, he couldn't do it. I still have hold out a lot of hope for Sinza Fear of being being right out of the top drawer, right out of the top drawer. Yeah, I get I get the sense um, Owen McKenna is not rushing him. Uh, while he yeah. has had a bit of racing and whatnot, I, I think he's shown an awful lot of promise from the very first time he brought him to the track. That's the whisper mm. I'm hearing. Uh, we will be talking about Owen McKenna in a moment or two again um, for very good reasons. Um, on to the 12th race in the car. Just you mentioned him there, Tommy, so we might go with him. Uh, Trinity Junior uh, racing from trap two. You know, Beeper's Lariat is coming out well. Seek the Kingdom's coming out well on his flanks. Uh, and it looks like Trinity Junior is going to have to check up or whatever. If he was a dog having his fourth or fifth start, I have absolutely no doubt he would have checked the stride after four strides and moved left or moved right but as you said he showed that great experience and he just keeps nudging keeps nudging just doesn't let the gap close and then bang when when he has a, a half an inch of daylight gone through the gap professional as you like he is English Derby bound he will go over without a trial but that experience of all this racing you know look at all the classics he's been in the, he won a champion stakes been a final of a ledger final of a juvenile derby a yeah. semi-finalist in the, in, the, in the ledger again and last year you know he's just one of those dogs Barry where if you put him in the right race He's so professional. You just know he's going to run his race and and he'll win when he's supposed to win. Like he's four to five the other night, and after a stride you wouldn't have taken five to one, but after ten strides you're going. I wish I was on at four to five. Yeah, definitely. Look, and obviously he was in the the recent select stakes final and he got it all wrong. You know, at the traps, but he showed massive pace to challenge down into the third corner. Yeah, absolutely. Into the third bend, you would have said to himself, you said to yourself, this dog is a right chance at the the pace he was showing. Yeah, definitely. Look, and it was such a hotly contested select stakes. But yeah, he's a, a real talented greyhound and uh, made the most, I suppose, of a good opportunity to return to winning ways there on, on Saturday night. And, you know, they'll be hopeful of, uh, you know, a big um, campaign in the English greyhound there. We could see him going well. Yeah, the, the lack of a trial is an issue. Uh, I'll, I'll be, <laughs> But you'd imagine, you'd imagine that, you know, I don't know how many heats they're going to be, but... <laughs> If he can avoid most of the Irish, he'll be okay because there ain't an awful lot in the UK. You know what I mean? Like with, with we'll get to it later on. But Graham Holland's winning trial stakes for Greyhounds that wouldn't be they wouldn't be six to four now to win an AO. Never mind an AAO in Shelburne Park on the Saturday night. So it would suggest that if you take out the top four or five of the English, I'm not sure there's an awful lot of strength and depth. I think you'd be keeping an eye on the Irish rather than the English. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, it's going to be an unbelievable Irish challenge this year, I suppose, with the way things are falling. And um, I think we'll have plenty to show about in the coming weeks. Hopefully, Trinity Junior is one of them uh, laying down a challenge in the latter stages of the competition. Let's just glance to the Shelburne card. Um, we're not going to talk about it now, but take a chance to look at the opening race from Shelburne on Saturday night, lads. It's it's well worth viewing. Okay, it's well worth viewing. Uh, but but do it with, with your hands close to your face. I've never seen a couple of exhibitions like it. Two dogs, Mark Dorkwood. It was a it was a gem. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll start with uh, well, Rapido Bob, a good winner for for Peter Crone. He's gone nice way. Peter Crone had three winners on the night, uh, but outdone by a certain old McKenna. We'll get to him in a moment. High view splash twenty eight twenty five. Tommy, it constitutes a slight drop in grade. This was an AO contest compared to the AAO. I think he's a dog that probably does need two or three runs to find himself again, and I think this will really stand to him. You know, the AO contest, he broke reasonably well from trap three, held bonkers and yonkers at the corner, went to the front. A 1582 to the third bend is really racing, goes on to win in 28 25. Great to see him back to winning ways. He looks such a talent the back end of last year. It's very funny. Before we came on here, I was having a look at the, um, I was having a look back at 
when was the last time he'd won a race because I couldn't remember. And it's only March. It's not a long time ago. Yeah. But I was the same as you. My reaction was, it's great to see him back because he'd been in some very tough races and just just things hadn't worked for him and he hadn't looked he hadn't looked the same dog to some degree because he wasn't getting into clear. But when he's when he's in the clear, he's he's ferociously fast. He's got savage ability. Um, I was just the same as you, just glad to see him win the race again, even though it, it, it hasn't been that long. It just feels like it's been a bit longer. Um, just probably that little yard of early pace in, in the very top company is going to hold him up, isn't it? I think that's his issue. Just that yard in the corner. But again, it's, it's probably against the 525 yard dogs. I think he might get away with a 550. But whether he's going to be leading around the corner in derby quarterfinals or semifinals, I don't know. Uh, and and that's the issue. You know, that's you sort of find yourself in between two stools. And as I said, he had a slight easing grade the other night and just made it look easy. Yeah, and and, and there's also there's also a case that with, with, with a lot of these greyhounds, even the likes of him, when they have that ability, there's no there's no need to be rushing them now. Like let them run no. away in their let them run away in their own steam. You don't have to be training them too hard, don't have to be doing too much with them, just just keep them fit and healthy. And uh, let them run run away for the moment, keep them ticking over, and keep them doing what they're enjoying, and then uh, then start to wind them up a bit for the derby. You know, get them really really tight and get them ready to go. Yeah, we're we're talking about timing for the Oaks, um, Barry. Uh, Let's go, Bubbles hadn't won a race since last December, albeit she'd only had sort of um, five or six starts before Saturday night. Um, she was installed a warm enough favorite. You know, she she was given a, a relatively straightforward task. It was an A one contest, but like. That that feels a bit disingenuous. It was just the dogs that were in it were were slightly out of luck in recent times. Like Juby Elsa, who is uh, who was second. Like I think she was third in the English Oaks last year for for Robert Gleeson. You know, like she's she's a very talented lady. Yeah, she was third in the English Oaks, so it was a good contest. Let's go, Bubbles. Though seems to be timing her run twenty eight thirty six. She didn't take a flyer. She raced around the outside, took it up on the opening corner, went on to win in twenty eight thirty six. She is one that sort of reminded you that she has ability. Like she won the Puppy Oaks last year. She, she's obviously very fast, and if she continue in this sort of vein. You know, I don't think she'll win an Oaks, but she could go deep. Yeah, without a doubt. And uh, look, um, when when she when she won the Island Park early lead, um, you know, it, it it was race over as well because she'd often caught the eye in recent outings, I suppose, with with finishing well. But you know, she's very strong. She's got winning form over over further as well. So look, she made the most of a golden opportunity, and uh, yeah, nice performance. Yeah, nice performance. As a right one to five seven five, another winner for Peter Cronin. and she got off the front and, and that was that. We saw how strong she was in the Shelburne Open six hundred. Um the seventh race in the card, Bally McAnica won in twenty eight seventy three. I normally wouldn't spend too much time on this, but it was a notable winner because it was Owen McKenna's two thousand winner. Now that's a fair achievement. Uh, Owen obviously a dual derby winning trainer, a uh, member of, you know, the Greyhound Racing family. His his leg- legendary late father, Jerry McKenna, um, was, you know, the best of all time. Um, two thousand winners, Tommy, not to be sniffed at at some achievement. No, that's he's a top class trainer for, for for a very long time. Yeah, I I actually find it hard to gauge how 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 the figure fits in, if you know what I mean. It's it's, it's to say just how good it is or to understand how just just how good it is. I don't know what it's over over how many years and how many races, but it's like it's fabulous. Two thousand is a huge amount. But he's he's uh I I, I, I always I always more associate uh, Owen McKenna with quality rather than quantity anyway. So to get I was, to I, was go, I was gonna say considering the number of winners mm. from like he, he's not a man that has fifty dogs in training. No, you know what I mean? Or anything no. like it. Um, but as you say, focus on quality. Like the fact that he's having four winners in Shelburne Park on a Saturday night tells mm-hmm. you what you need to know. Like it's not too often you see him with a winner on a Thursday or a Friday. <laughs> Sorry, it's what say about winning on Thursday or Friday? It's not often you'd see him with a winner on a th- oh, no, runner, exactly. on a runner so, on the Thursday or Friday. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. No, no, to me, to me, it's always been right down through the years, it's always been the focus has been on quality, not quantity. And so that's probably why I I I don't know where the figure fits, but you know, relative to, to other trainers, but it's exceptionally good because he's 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 a fellow who who tends not to be uh running them down the grades, down down the lower grades. Yeah. It's all up at the top level. Barry, you're you're a you know, you're a few years younger than myself and Tommy. We would have actually remembered Jeremy McKenna as a trainer. You know, not 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 for a long time, but you know, we we do remember him as a trainer. Um, you would have never seen Jeremy McKenna as a trainer, I assume. No, no, that's no. correct. 
So you would have always associated Owen McKenna with top class greyhounds again. You, you know, exactly. When you exactly. first got involved in the sport, he was probably, you know, I don't know how long ago you you got involved, but you'd have remembered that. You know, Farlow Blitz seems quite new to me, but when you look back at it, it's probably twelve years in it or more. Yeah, definitely. I suppose look when I started following the the game closely first, probably twenty twenty one years ago, and um, Owen McKenna would have been one of the trainers. I suppose would have been you know top of the tree at that stage. And I think it's fair to say probably there recent you know times a couple of years ago he was probably struggling to get the big dog, and you know then he came back with you know the likes of Pastana and Susie Safwer. You know he's coming across real good dogs again there in recent times, which is always great to see because as I said, you know the the name McKenna um is known all over the world from from great. Greyhound racing enthusiasts, and as Tommy said, look, he he keeps the the quality greyhounds not interested, I suppose, in heading off, you know, with 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 ordinary dogs, and uh, yeah, it's a remarkable achievement, and um, great seeing with you know top class greyhounds again in recent years. Yeah, a great dry wit does Owen have, and uh, every now and again you get an old message from him on WhatsApp, and you can be absolutely certain it's cutting. Like he will absolutely cut you in two in some way or other, be it in a humorous manner, or he's a great man. I don't know where he finds his memes, but he he loves absolutely ripping the, you know, the P double or P I double, you know, off me. And uh, oh, fair play to him. It's an incredible achievement. You think about it, Owen. He thinks of the likes of obviously Susie Safar and Pastana. He had a Derby winner in in like a shot. He had the great hand lad won an Easter Cup. Um, I remember Farlow Blitz absolutely blitzing around Shelburne Park and and Wimbledon. It would have been great to see him win that English Derby. Uh, go further back to the likes of Deerfield Sunset. He had so many of the fast Deerfield dogs as his father did before him uh, for the late. Uh, Father Brian Dalton, but um, yeah, just just a, a great trainer, and it's an, a remarkable achievement. He had winners, uh, one thousand nine hundred ninety nine winner, two thousand two thousand and one, and two thousand and two at Children Park on Saturday night. And if you're winning four races at Children Park on a Saturday night, you're doing something right. Congratulations, Owen. And um, I won't say that Damien Lonigan says he, he taught you everything you know, but you know he, he said something along those lines. Um, on we move. Wrath down Molly. Great to see her winning again, Tommy. She's such a professional. 2887, as I said, I think the track was starting to just go back a bit through the evening. She would have badly needed the run. She badly needed the previous week. She faded completely away. This week, she stuck on grimly to hold on from Scooby the Jet. You would expect her to continue to improve week on week. And, and she's another one that could certainly go deep in an Oaks. No, she's no favour. Um, she she last race well, she 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 raced in January, right? Mid January, she didn't race again till the start of May. Um, and she you see her two her two trials on a car, the two sprints. I'd expect her to step up again. You know, it's obviously been aimed at, at taking a tilt at the oaks that you know she come on from the run last week, come on from the run again the other night, and peak over the next few weeks. Hopefully that she'll progress into the Oaks. So she, she's a smasher, one of my favourites. Yeah, I think I remember trying to convince you to back her in the Constellation Laurels last year, Barry. She was in a tricky draw out in four, but I think your Cork bias meant you had to back one in the red jacket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, we um we, we were we were treated some good performances by her down in Cork, of course. And uh I thought that was a real hot race there on Saturday night because Droopy's Carbine, I think at a twenty eight twenty trial had some good form around Corky, Droopy, Zelda in the mix, Scooby the Jet. I thought there was a lot to like about that performance. And, you know, as Tommy said, I would imagine it, it'll come on for the run. And um, you know, it could be could could go a long way in the in in in, in the Oaks, of course, uh, for the Gilbert uh, uh, kennels. And uh, no doubt they'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, but that was that was a real good performance and a hot contest I thought Saturday night. Yeah, no, good 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 run. Um Skippy Gilbert was never one to be worried about the clock. You know, if they come out in front, it doesn't matter if they do 31 <laughs> seconds or 28 seconds. The 2887, the fact that she did 2859 the previous week, I think that tells you where the track was, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you know, because she should have really come on for that previous run. So I think the 2887, you can take 30 off that, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Um, race nine, tell on Bella, another winner for uh, Owen McKenna. We, we spoke about pedigrees earlier on. 2876, does everything right. Droopy Sydney out of Bally McBeanie. She didn't take it up until sort of halfway down the back straight into the third bend. She looks a really nice young prospect. She she's in April, so she she's gone two years of age, but she's literally only had this only her third career start. And again, I mean, no surprise to me if she was going half a second faster in a couple of weeks' time. And then we were back into the champion champion um 
the Shelburne Champion 550. So a good card at Shelburne Park. It's our night. Some some clues going ahead, uh, but the ones we'll be taking out of it obviously are the Shelburne Champion 550, a couple of the good bitches, and Trinity Junior. Such a likable display in the finale. Let's move on. Um, we will get back. Actually, do you know what? We'll just mention the Island Bridge Sprint continued at Shelburne on Friday night. Due to the void race the previous week, um, there was one trial or one race semi-finals won't take place next week but there was one heat that was rerun we saw Romeo Falco storming home in the voided contest to land the spoils or you know what so so we thought um the other evening he missed the kick he flew home but Rob, Robbie's tiger who had actually been the dog that was worst affected by the traps the previous week he'd stumbled out of traps he was left considerably behind and on this occasion he broke reasonably well was second to gumption into the corner ran a fine corner take it up into the home straight and uh, Romeo Falco came at him they finished just a short head between them so Robbie's Tyra Romeo Falco uh, gumption and I believe maybe old tricks also progresses uh, it's probably a two semi yeah three three heats two semi-finals um, so two semi-finals of that next Friday night at Shelburne Park we're just trying to tick off all the things we've done here we've done Shelburne we've done Lim Let's go to Cork, um, Barry. Uh, we will get to we will get to um, Kilkenny and Newbridge in a moment, and, and Tralee. But we, we better go to Cork because there was a final, and it was a good final. And um, the Spring Derby, it was a, a hell of a prize. Uh, provided tremendous racing throughout, but it, it was clear from last week that the big two were going to be Katsumoto and Bally Max Slick. And once again, they played out the finish. Um, a tremendous finish. It looked, I have to tell you, it looked like a very short neck to me. Such was the speed that Ballymac Slick was finishing. But Katsumoto got off the front. He's a he's a nice dog. Yeah, definitely. Look, he's all about early speed. And I suppose, look, the, the draw had been, you know, favourable to him over the course of the last couple of weeks. But look, obviously, it was a lovely prize. Seven and a half thousand tours to the winner. An A2 competition. And what I really liked about the event over the course of the last couple of weeks you know, there was no 28-10, 28-20, there was 28-60, 28-70, 28-80. So, um, you know, it was a kind of a real great affair. Um, 28-52 in the final, and he he needed every bit of it. Of course, look, trained by uh, Jerry Hulian for, for owners, uh, Baslin and Bernadette Hulian, who are, I suppose, no stranger to success, uh, I suppose, uh, especially in the in, in the coursing fields. And they had a nice winner, actually, in, in, in the heart racing as well. They were recently at, at Clan Mail, trained by Henry de Bromhead. Uh, so they have a lot to look forward to with her to uh, Lady Brizzle, I think is her name. But uh, yeah, look, he won it early. I think he was 16-16 down into the third corner. And uh, Belly Mac Slick, of course, we were all keeping an eye on him. We knew he'd be powering home. Just took him a while to get past uh, Burgess Cannon. And uh, as I said, the line came in time uh, for the winner who delivered a career best performance, it has to be said, in the final. And uh, as I said, needed every bit of it on the night. Uh, just winning by a neck there. But yeah, it was an exciting finish and uh, a deserving winner. Uh, the difference between a neck, Tommy, is 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 vast in a sense where next time out Katsumoto's in, in mini open company, he's an AO company. Mm-hmm. Bally Max Lick beating a neck is an A1 <laughs> contest. I wouldn't mind backing him at four to one to win an A1 soon. Do you know what? Like like when you see a dog with, with uh, is it eleven or twelve runs and six six runner up and no win, um, you kind of you would you would question it. But actually I think the race was lost here at the going to the third bend. <clears throat> but I think he, he made uh, the move up Cannon the inside can... of the he made the inside of move yeah Burgess off the last but... bend if, if the four dog hadn't been there he'd have won yeah and the Burgess Cannon dog kind of kept him out uh, or moved off middle to wide down the back and it kind of prevented Burge, or Ballymac Slick from making the run down the outside and getting into second place earlier which would have been the win of the race I think Um, I would suspect that Ballymac Slick breaks, breaks the clock at home I would yeah. say the dog has I'll tell you a story. insane ability. I'll huh? tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. The night of the Greyhound Awards were in Limerick and, and Liam sort of said to me, will they be showing Shelburne? I said, I'm sure they will. He says, all right. He said, now I have a dog there later on. I knew he had four or five dogs in the cart in Shelburne. I was yeah. going, uh, yeah. you fancy one? Ah, you know, you know, you know Liam. <laughs> I said, see if you can get me a few quid on them. Um, uh, Ballymac Slick, you know, in the last, I was like, all right, I'll see. I think I rang Hegarty and Hegarty, you know, took a bet off me, whatever, before before racing started, even. And uh, four to six, he was sent off in a 600 yard contest. He's beaten four lengths by Kyanite Kate, who went down to be beaten mm-hmm. only in the last few strides in the Shelburne Open 600. You know, that's that's unlucky. You know what I mean? You run into one in an A2 contest in Shelburne Park that goes on to be second in the Classic only a matter of weeks later. Um, no, but I agree with you. I think Ballymac Slick is probably 
catching pigeons at home. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have assumed Cork would be his track, but he actually, he actually ran the place quite well. Um, but you stick him in a five fifty or a five seven five now around Shelburne Park. He, he he won't be a four to six in an A two contest. He'll be four to nine in an A one contest. That's what's going to happen, I'd say. Quite possibly, he's um look at he he's like I was looking. You know, if you, you, she, of course we should we don't often say it out loud. But when I was looking, at his, how's the record going into the final? I was going. I have to check. Is there is there something here? But I watched the semi final, and he absolutely both clear to the escape. And he did the same the other night. Like he flew through. Yes, you could like you could be saying, "Oh, he came close to the forward off the last bend." He did because he's 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 not an inside seed and he wanted to move off naturally. But the ground he made up again in the last twenty yards is 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 remarkable. So he's 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 diabolically unlucky. But then again, I remember I remember Ian when you and I were young lad, younger, and back in two dogs that are sticking in my mind that you and I were back in very early in the career there were pups late late show and Premier Fantasy the two of them were getting beaten late late show was yeah. coming too late Premier Fantasy the same just coming too late be, be beating heads next and a half length for a while that's what it felt like anyway because we seemed to be backing them uh, week on week and they turned out to be superstars Bally Mexlick just needs that little bit of luck early it's funny actually. What was the bitch that Liam had to finish second in the in the Laurels there a few years ago? Barry will probably remember. I have a head like a sieve. Um, but Blue home was this? Was she was she flying home? Um, yeah, whisper, 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 whisper yeah. 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 Whisper, like you'd have said, Whisper was no chance of Whisper being 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 a Curraheen Laurel <laughs> Laurel bitch like around Curraheen Park. No, no chance. And was desperately unlucky in the final in the final level Laurel. So I mean, surely beat, like, surely beat the head or neck or something. And then she yeah, won. She, she, won the kingdom, she won the Kingdom Derby. Yeah. Uh, she picked yeah. up Bally McFinn on the line to win by a short head or head and that. Yeah. I think I think actually I remember one on a, on a Laurel's final night too that 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 Liam had the dog that. I had been it was it, it might have been an A two stake final or something like that. And he won by ten links or it might have been the semi final of the Laurels. Um, just they, like it, when it clicks for the likes of these, the like and it will click for Ballymac Slick. He'll do some clock. Yeah, I it's more pointing out he's out of Ballymac Merkel. Her obviously her previous letter, her first letter were all superstar stayers. Mm. Ballymac Katie, Ballymac Taylor, Hacka Carlo, Garfini Blaze, who's absolutely flying yeah. in the UK. Um I I think it's safe to say they'll breed Ballymac Merkel again. Um she she's thrown them. She's thrown loads of loads of stamina but I think there's more speed in Ballymac Slick than, than some of the some of those from the previous litter who needed a trip whereas this fellow is fast enough to win over 525 yes he is yet to win a race but I think it's safe to say he's even though it's an A2 contest the other evening I think it's safe to say he's one of the fastest maidens in the country certainly of those with more than four or five runs he, he's he's without question the fastest I'd, I'd imagine um, other, other than that um, anything else to talk about on the card Barry um, Cork some good racing of late yeah, definitely. Look, um, I suppose over the last couple of months, um, you know, every Saturday night we have a competition that's you know worth more more than five thousand euros, which which is always you know a, a good event. Um, there was a small memorial race there, one thousand euros to the winner of the Jerry Mangan Memorial A six A seven. It was two runs, one thousand euros won by um Classine Iris uh, for Marguerite uh, Grassic, their real family um operation. They got a great kick out of that um on Saturday night. Great to see the the kids there in, in the presentation with the the trophy and all. So yeah, that was the highlight. Elsewhere. Um, Dells or Bells won the, the final race there. That was a, a nice performance winning the uh five seven five and thirty one twenty eight. And uh looking forward to the Deadly Kennels um open seven fifty, uh which starts next Saturday night. And um it's a big uh fundraising night for St. Finbar's GA. Um, Cork uh, GA legend of course Jimmy Barry Murphy has been busy promoting that uh, night over the course of the last couple of weeks and uh, I know they're expecting a bumper crowd there on Saturday night so anyone w w within the area should definitely come out and uh, Darren Hogan informs us that there's going to be very good racing um, on the undercard so it's going to be um, you know, a great night there on Saturday night and with Cork Hurlers winning last week um, <laughs> Telling you, I tell you, Tommy, that would have been one to fifty to get a mention today. I knew it was on the way. <laughs> I knew when he, when he interviewed Jimmy the other day, he had to wait till the match was over and get Jimmy in good form and have a chat about it as well. <laughs> oh, I was watching that video, all right, going, "Oh, Barry, 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 come on!" Uh, yeah, yeah. I, had not, to, I had to listen to it from the wife yeah. and kids. It's not often I'd say this, but it must be a good time to be a Corkman. <laughs> and act. Uh, Jimmy was talking about the the all minor hur hurlers, where I think. Tommy's young for Dylan's involved. I think they gave um, St. Fitzbarris <laughs> a behind there recently and, and Jimmy was impressed. So 
good things to come. Um, we'll we'll be keeping you know and Dylan there and, and and the oil miners going forward. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy, uh, super sire. What can we say? He's like Droopy Sydney down there, yeah. uh, throwing, <laughs> throwing, throwing, throwing only open classers. Um, Retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a similar enough racing career to Droopy Sydney. In fairness to him, she um, <laughs> very brief, very brief glimpses of promise shall we say um let's let's move to Kilkenny um no listen great stuff going on in Cork as you say should be an unbelievable night down on Saturday night and if JBM can't attract a crowd well no one can uh he's mm. god down in those parts and um I, I wish him the very very best of luck um St Finbar's I'm sure Barry has no problem with St Finbar's whatsoever I'm, I'm sure he, he loves them as the club uh <laughs> <laughs> let's move on uh the champion five uh, the champion open on race continued as Ask Kilkenny on Friday night, and obviously we were missing Jack Tavern Gem, the dog mm-hmm. that that posted the sensationally fast time in the opening round. Sadly, um, he he is fighting against a career threatening injury. We hope to see him back in the track in the very near future. Um, but there there was plenty of quality left. Um, we'll we'll let Barry talk about the opening heat winner because he, he may well know the connections. Uh, Johnny Lennon, for the luckiest owners in the history of Greyhound Racing, the Ryan Drake Donovan Syndicate, they have never ever been unlucky with one even 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 when one gets hurt early turns into droopy sydney was it was was it those boys involved the court michelle uh, I'm, I'm not sure I, I, yeah no i think i think it was um off the top of my head i think it was the right Ryan direct donovan uh syndicate that yeah, had him, yeah. so, so this son of droopy sydney out of the superstar that was droopy zalas and um, he had been picked up in the previous round he had qualified in 28 40 in Curraheen last november i would suggest he probably has had a, a little niggle or two but he's in august 22 maybe they just decided to put him away he looked last week like perhaps he may need the run didn't look like that in friday night barry he shows a lovely turn of early speed gets to the front and just keeps on galloping really opens up down to the third bend and, and coasts home to win in 28 93 take the third off at 2863. Hell of a good run. Looks a real nice pup. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, they, they'll be dreaming of, of classic success going forward with this ground, of course. Um, August Youngster. And as you said, he really flew into the opening corners, took off down down the back straight and, you know, improved for his um, you know, debut um experience, debut run. And, you know, it was one of the, the standout performances, you know, on the night. And uh, yeah, a top class run. They won't be hanging around with this fellow after this competition. You'd imagine they'll get two or three more runs around and the likes of Curraheen Park because he looks every inch of Laurel's dog, Tommy. Uh, he does, yeah. And he, he kind of um aged inwards. Um, I think it was probably a better, even a better run than it looked. And I would say, I would say he did need that run again the other night. Yeah. The impression I got from him that maybe he did need it again. Um, I thought it was a smashing performance. He, he Again, I, I get caught out by these tracks and different camera angles because I thought, geez, he looked like a massive dog. Um, it's funny. There were three cameras. It's a low camera. It's a low camera in Kilkenny. Yeah, yeah. It makes a difference. close enough to the action, you know? Yeah. But there were, there, were, there were three. It's funny. Isn't it funny how, how, how you know, without realizing this, you do pick up in these things in terms of, the, you know, the, the way I'd, I'd look at the way a dog is running or what, what, he, what he looks like that way in terms of you know size or how he gallops or whatever and just just a, a change of a camera can make things so different they're actually fully enough which is kind of random and and, and pointless but I'll say it anyway we're three pounds in weight between the difference in the six dogs and that and that he feels right so if they met at the first bend there would be some fun yeah god uh, like I, as you say like they're, they're like they're not they're not huge dogs but they're they're, they're just, size. They're they're the just well built them. dogs. Like they're they're like 74, 75 pounds is is nearly ideal for a racing greyhound. You know, uh, between seventy four and seventy eight is just perfect for yeah. a dog. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, Monteen Wildcat in second spot. I, I think he's a lot of pace. Um obviously yeah. he's very well bred too. He uh Sea Glass Shadow was was top class in the UK. She's actually another uh, droopy Sydney. Um Ballymac the lad, big eye catcher again in third spot. I think this fellow has a, a very, very big engine. Um I, I think other tracks will, will suit him better than Kilkenny, but I, I wouldn't be ruling him out now in terms of this competition uh, going forward. Um, let's move on to the second heat, Nico Harbour, um, a brother to the aforementioned Sid Zafiro, who we were speaking about, obviously bred in the purple, um, Droopy Sydney, Susie Sapphire. Uh, didn't, like, he had, to, he had to sort of make his own look. Um, it's a hell of a run. but did show lots of pace and determination and you know again like Sid Zafiro may just need to find that yard into the opening corner but like he's third into the back straight after meeting a little bit of hardship god he charges into that third bend Tommy like a greyhound that just wants to get to the front and um, 
so much to like about him. I, I couldn't believe he, he, he the way he burst out of the pack effectively. It's what it looked like. Um, it's 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 a uh, there's a maturity to that that he that he doesn't have in in terms of genuine experience. He's only had two runs, obviously. Um, there's a maturity to that effort, which bodes particularly well for the future because he is going to mature. He is going to improve. He is going to step up. I thought that was one hell of a run. Twenty eight ninety three after after not having much luck in the in, on the run to the bends, not having much room down the back. Yeah, huge run. Barry, do you know what uh, Joe Sheehan would say if he was here? Go on. An ounce of breeding is worth a ton of feeding. Um, yeah, Nico yeah, Harbo yeah. has, he's got a ton of, of breeding, never mind the feeding. Um, it's its amazing, you know, how like the best often do produce the best. And, and this fellow, again, he looks more like a 550-yard type greyhound. But I'll tell you one thing, you'd love to own a leg of him. Oh, definitely, definitely. Look, it was it was the performance of the night, and you know, could even be the performance of the the weekend. Um, you know, things didn't you know go uh, entirely right early, but you know, the the pace that he displayed on the night was you know of the the, the highest order, and um, yeah, I loved loved every bit of of that performance. And as you said, just just look at the breeding, um, yeah, superstar in the making for sure. Yeah, Peter Comerford and Owen McKenna. Um, not a bad weekend for them. Not bad. Not a bad weekend. Certainly for Owen and uh, Nico Harbour is a, a very nice type. Um, beaming opium is worth a mention in second spot. Uh, Corona Ryan, uh, an absolute enthusiast to the, to the hills. Only in November twenty two. Well, thought it showed a lovely turn of early speed to get around in front. Um, just one to keep your eye on. Uh, 2917 last week, uh, that's after the minus 20. Uh, 2901 this week after the minus 30. But it qualified reasonably well. Only November, lots to come from that bitch. Um, you know, sorry, bitch. Yeah, God. Yeah, she's only 63 pounds. But yeah, lots to like about her. Um, be it, you know, whether she turns into top class performer, we don't know. But I'll tell you one thing, she could certainly breed one because she's she's very well bred herself and, and deadly disco back in third spot. Uh, a couple of the caught my eye in the opening and saw this tiger and Ballybock nuts out of luck and um, didn't didn't make the frame worth mentioning there. At a third heat went to Julie's gem. And this was a race where it was nearly thrown to her down the back straight. She had to show good pace and um sort of bit of track craft to, to turn relatively close to the pace but when Lionheart and Good Rory clashed early in the back straight she was sort of left with no choice but to go to the front and she emerged a good winner um, Barry you know it was a strange type of contest I have no doubt there's lots to come from the winner um, she, she will continue mm-hmm. to improve she's going to need to uh, find her trapping boots however yeah, definitely. Look, it was a real messy uh, contest. Uh, you know, plenty uh, got trouble in behind, but um, at the same time, look, the, the winner took her chance. Um, well, September puppy, and uh, yeah, look, she got the job done, and uh, I'm sure she'll build on it going forward. Uh, but yeah, look, messy contest. Yeah, Lionheart um ran actually well to finish third in the end. He, he's another um son of Drupy Sydney out of Susie Sapphire, brother to Nico Harbour. I would suggest looking at the trial form. You know, very unusual for Mary Gilbert to let one qualify in 1873 in Shelburne Park. <laughs> There's probably plenty to come from this fellow, Tommy. <laughs> he could pop up at Shelburne some night and do a 2940 for 550 and would it be a surprise to anyone? No, not, not a bit. Um, it was actually, you know what, Lionheart and Good Rory were, were obviously well positioned. It's a bit like um, Billy Steve and Susie Sapphire, the two dams, and they had a bit of a clash in the, in the yeah. final of the Yokes. Back in twenty one, yeah, it was twenty one. Uh, Billy's diva won the English Oaks that later that year. Um, she, mm. you know, what a star she was! She, uh, she, she was an old favorite of mine. We she talked actually, about her. She a actually lot. had a very good winner in Shelburne Park the other night in an unraced stake. We must give it a mention on Friday night. Um, a dog called. I can't remember his name. Um, all, all I know is no, uh, yeah, all I know is he was disqualified. He was disqualified for going too fast. It was an O N two, and he did twenty eight sixty one. I think if he'd done twenty eight seventy, he would have been allowed off. But he was disqualified for time finding. I won't be allowed to run the next day. I'm not sure John Kennedy be too fussed. You know, you know. No, no, no. Um, no. I think was, I think what happened in that really race, nice was that, yeah, I think I think uh, Good Rory was trying to maybe step out across and move out, uh, move off a little bit middle to wide. And just ran into Lion Hearts. They, 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 they were probably in, in each other's racing line. They wanted to be the other yeah, way around. Yeah, they're they pups, were, they're yeah, youngsters. They're, um, when, you consider yeah, exactly. the winner, when you consider the winner of those 29-25, they're three, yeah. four, they're at that stage and only starting to run. Just yeah. keep an eye on both Lionheart and Good Rory. As you say, Tommy, the, the two dams, 
uh, were were pretty special. Another dam that was very very talented was um, Ballymac Orna. She was the dam of Hogan Stand, um, who won the last of the the four heats, um, twenty nine twenty. But I like the way it went about it. Um, held its pitch into the opening corner. Hopes Teddy looked like going around in front, but just nudged out away by Hogan Stand, who got on the bunny. A twelve to one chance. Didn't run like a 12 to 1 chance. You can't say there was anything lucky about this. Uh, James O'Regan, um, Barry, he, he can do a dog. Hogan stands. Just don't be surprised if he continues to improve at a rapid enough rate. 1767 in qualifying round for Lee would suggest that there's ability there. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, you, you, you summed it up well there. I like this ground. Look, he might win the competition, but I'd fancy him to win a nice pot going forward. Uh, so, so brave, I suppose, at the opening turns. There, there wasn't much room along the inside of the track and you know a bit of bumping going on there around the opening corners, but uh, he really stuck his neck out. And um, as I said, look, uh, got the job done in 29-20. I have no doubt he'll go much faster going forward. And uh, yeah, he's, he's an exciting talent. Yeah, with Jack Tavern Gem going out, Tommy, who who was potentially capable of doing a, a twenty eight fifty around there, um, off the front, but obviously well enough forward and a very very talented dog. But I I don't think we can rule out any or or most of these. I I think there could be still four or five potential future classic winners in the in the lineup. They're all so young, so inexperienced, but they've shown plenty of promise. Be interesting to see what times they can do in 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 future. Like, like Hogan Stand did really well to to stand up. It was it was getting squeezed so badly. And actually, the same to be fair to Judy's Gem, who did twenty nine twenty five. Despite you know, obviously, obviously the race was kind of gifted to her. Our, our position was gifted to her down the, to him down the back. But I tell you what, uh, the, the the if you watch just the first hundred yards or whatever it is into the into the bend. It was some effort to, to, to stay in stay in our feet. Like and then Hogan stand the same in his heat. I think he did really well because he's after being squeezed a little bit early and going for the gap up the inside and had to hold as well. Like the two twenty nine twenties you got, uh, they're a bit behind the twenty eight ninety threes. But, but um, they're not. They're, they're not. Uh, yeah. They're not. not. There's nothing in it. You know, that said, Nico Harbour with a clear passage could be doing a twenty eight. Yeah, would have done a bit more. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, and and yeah, and I think I think and funnily enough, we, we talked about Broadstone and uh, see that we think he's going he'll to through the nice bit again. He he yeah, he just looks yeah. like he needs them, doesn't he? Yeah. So I I'd just be interested to see what they'll do and like do doing clock around Kilkenny as some performance. Yeah, hell of a competition. Always has been, always will be. Uh, Fifteen thousand euros to winner. We will be keeping a keen eye on that, lads. I'll just run. I'll, I'll go. I'll roll with the friends yeah. of uh, Newbridge Derby myself. And um, the yeah. four heats were won by Lilu Kunuk, Paddy, May Bozada, and Victory Lane. They all had something in common. Each of them were off the pace early. They all turned uh, third into the back straight, and all four of them came home strongly to land the spoils. Uh, Lilu had set the standard in the opening round. Thought she showed real determination and pace to get to the front and she ends up winning by three lengths she's clear to the escape I thought it was a, she just looks like a lady who is absolutely loving life at present and if she does find a start and, and she is capable of going up a little bit better than she has there's definitely a 29.80 run in her um, no question about that and that could be good enough to win this competition has been a great competition over the last two to three years it's very competitive same for this year Kunuk Paddy who had a spell in the UK member of a very fast and very strong litter Grange U10 out of Kunuk Dolly um, every one of them seem to be open class in the UK well this fellow returned from the UK with some good form around home some eye catching runs didn't quite happen from over there and only was lightly raced I'd say he picked up a little niggle or something came back to Ireland was tried straight over 750 yards but the step back to 550 around Newbridge has really suited him again didn't look a likely winner he's lengths off the pace into the back straight gets up to win by two lengths in 29.94 uh, Southfield Duke again showing a bit of promise for Keith Powell uh, the 550 just seems to stretch him a little bit uh, Lodgefield Mag back in third. Next, he'd made Bazada, a member of that fast litter again. Karma King is his brother, Juby Sydney Peters Queen. Um, again, third into the back straight, showed loads of pace, loads of power, gets up to win by half length in 30.09. Lots to like about him. Uh, a good runner for Dave Burke and Javier Jarn. They'll have lots of fun with this fellow because he will stay further. And the last heat, well, I thought it was all over after, you know, the opening corner. Harlequin James, who had been my eye catcher in the opening round, showing loads of pace to come from off the pace. Well, when he set the you know, when he went round in front, I went, well, Harlequin Drains just wins. And then Victory Road. Well, like I know there's loads of stamina in the in the pedigree. Burrow, Burrow Gold on the dam side has thrown plenty of strong runs, one or two in the UK. Um, but Ken O'Neill's chart took off down into the third bend and flew home to win in 29.88. Obviously, he has run over 750 yards in the past, so they know he's pretty strong. But this was... This was no question for me, a career best effort. And uh, 29.88, running away, up the run in. 
it's better to come from him. He's a, he's a nice dog going forward, looking ahead. I think um, uh, probably a late developer in November 21, but keep an eye on him. Um, that's a cracking competition. You know, I'm after to mention four top class, well, four very good heat winners, shall we say. It's it's an A1 competition, but each one of these will be more than capable of running an AO and AAO in the future. Have no doubt about it. It's going to get very, very competitive going forward because you throw them all into the mix in the same race and they can't all get the first run or they can't all get a clear passage and, and it'll get very interesting indeed. Cracking competition, that Newbridge Derby. Uh, the Lee Strand, Barry, a couple of massive runs. Um, talk us through a couple of them. Yeah, as you said, a couple of massive runs there on Friday night. Dashing Toro um, is a youngster going places. Real, real uh, classy performance there. Was out of luck in the opening round, but uh, no mistakes this time around. Winning for the twice a day, every day. So ah. Just August puppy, um, you know, flying start to lead really strong in front. 29.47 on the clock. That's one um, with, with um, a big future ahead. Deadly choice. It was trained by Michael O'Donovan uh, for Gary Hannon. Came from a mile off the pace, uh, far from the quickest early, uh, but he has huge gears. He'd stay much fo- much further going forward. It was a real powerful display to win in 29.49. Elsewhere, David Flanagan uh, made the trip from his Tipperary base. Uh, three top Steve got the job done in 29.83. That was a good performance, uh, staying on well in the closing stages. Uh, trainer Pat Buckley, of course, has an unbelievable uh, kennel of greyhounds at the moment and uh, he's always uh, targeting these big competitions down in the kingdom he had a double on the night cool of any percy uh, getting the job done at 29.84 and um, unanimous uh, panther who set the standard in the opening round he made a two from two in the competition uh, slightly slower this time around 29.70 uh, but he did overcome a bit of crowding early he's another big player uh, for outright glory and uh, finally, uh, he four went the way of Joe's wink uh, for trainer Ray Fleming and uh, owner Margaret Lynch. Uh, the July puppy was in control early and uh, that scored in 29.92. So look, every year we see it, Ian, uh, you're more than familiar with the Lee Strand this year. Um, it produces high class greyhounds and don't be surprised if one or two went in to develop and, uh, as, as derby contenders uh, in the coming months. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that East Strand is one you always have to keep an eye on. Um, some exceptional greyhounds have emerged from that over the years. Um, and yeah, this year looks looks pretty hot. Uh, no question about it. Um, obviously, some massive racing in Toaster yesterday, gentlemen, just to finish off with. Uh, but imagine owning a dog like Swords Rex, Tommy. Just imagine. It. Yeah, he, he's un, he's unbelievable, isn't he? Yeah. Um, as you said, what we said beforehand, I think the, I think the dog you beat was, was the English Derby favourite. Yeah, King Memphis. I mean, Obviously, he ran well in defeat. Now, don't get me wrong, but oh, you know, Rex, Forge Rex in his first race after five months to yeah, pop out, show his professionalism once again. You'd imagine he'll come on for twenty eight ninety three. You know, a couple of weeks before the English Derby starts, I'd say Graham yeah. Holland was floating out a toaster yesterday. Yeah, and, all, and in fairness, all of his dogs ran well. Tom Brown Tree, he ran well, and I'm not sure that this really a track for him. Uh, how do you make of it as as actually as a track for Clambrown Treaty? I don't know. Uh, I, he didn't drift around as much as I thought he may have potentially done. Uh, I think he'll improve for the run. I, I like the way he catapulted into the back straight. Um, and I, I, I think if he keeps that racing line, he will largely avoid traffic. Um, you'd yeah. imagine he's not fully tuned up. So I, I just wouldn't be surprised if he ran a, a much better than I initially thought he might. Um, you know, he's beaten some decent runners there. Like King Sydney in second is no slouch. You know, obviously yeah. UK trained, fast dog. But Clombrine Treaty, you know, he has, we know exactly what he has. He has loads of pace. The trapping, the trapping mechanism over there might just suit him a bit better. Might just, see him come, off, yeah. might just see him breaking that bit better than, you know, you might see him breaking a bit better than he than he's known for, shall we say? Um, but no, a good winner for the Irish. Um, other ones just to mention there, uh, Riverside Pingu. You know, like I'm I'm not, I'm not denigrating the dog whatsoever. You know, he's a nice dog, Tommy. We've seen plenty of him. You know, Shelburne, Clamell, Cork, Limerick. You know, he doesn't win all too often. He sent off five to two in a in a Derby trial stick in the UK and just pops out, makes all looks looks easy to him. You know, if he was in a uh, look, the last race he won in Ireland was an A1 around Cork. Yes, he did 28-37 that night, but he'd been beaten in, in Cork a couple of times since in Shelburne Park in over 5.75, 5.50. Like, he's a nice dog. When the opportunity arises, he'll win a race, but if he was thrown into an AAO in Shelburne Park next Saturday night, he was out in four or five. He, like, he could be 14 to one. You know, Do you know what I'm saying in yeah, terms he... of the Irish dogs going over and what Graham is winning with? You wouldn't expect him to be winning in that company. 
yeah, it, it, it does bode well, doesn't it? It really yeah. does. Um, Barry, am I being yeah, unfair? So, like, you've probably seen the best of River St. Pingu down at Corraheen. Like, we know he's a talented dog when he gets on the bunny. But he doesn't get on it all that often. No, definitely not. And, you know, the night that he, he done it, as you said, he done everything right. And he's been kind of, you know, probably slightly disappointing since, you know, in, in, in probably tougher assignments at the same time. But, yeah, look, um, I'm, I'm look, a talented Greyhound, but Graham has um a lot more firepower in his kennel. Yeah, uh, Faye Point Sean got the ball rolling. He was second. He 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 ran into traffic. We know there's a lot better to come from him. He he looks a talented greyhound, no question about it. He he could potentially turn into a an English Derby type dog, uh, not too dissimilar to Gay Time Nemo where he was last year in terms of that sort of ability at present and come forward. You never know. Um, I th- just, just trying to not miss any. I'm going through all the various heats here. Swords Rex. Have to mention, um, I thought Hawkfield Blue ran okay in third. In that race, sort of forced to check his stride a little bit on the opening corner, lost ground, and when Swords Rex and King Memphis are out in front of you, you know, he ran okay to, to hold on for third. He's beaten five lengths behind um King Memphis in the third, but but ran okay. Romeo Kingpin was third to Queen Joan, who absolutely flew. Like there's no question she's she's the best bitch in the UK at present. Um, I thought Crafty Shavu was going to be well and truly holding on to that mantle, but Queen Joni has just taken off in the last few weeks. Obviously, she's always been very, very talented, but 28-67, it was a hell of a run. I, I, I just, a touch worried, Tommy, that it's happening now rather than in a month's time. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. It's a 397 section, that's probably huge, is it, relative to... It's, I mean, it's very I mean, big. Well, it's very big. Now, there are one or think- two doing 397, 398, and recent, whereas four seconds last year was unheard of. You know, it was always four ten. Yeah. It was a very fast. So obviously, see, there's issues going on with ham timing and mechanisms and whatnot. Like, you know, it's it it's a case of beware for punters at the moment around Toaster. Just strange is things. Is going to break our hearts? I, 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 I know they've going to they've closed. The, they've changed their schedule this week to to try and get a few things fixed, and, and hopefully that that works out. Uh, Hawkfield Abbey was out of luck behind Clambrown Treaty. He was back and forth. Um, anything else? Do was there any more trial stakes? Uh, Swords Fudge was second. He was two to one favorite in the Derby trial stake. Again, like Swords Fudge is just a really nice dog, but I I'd have him down as a mini open sort of dog, a one type dog. Um, you know, two to one, two to one favorite. He actually led to the opening corner in a Derby trial stake. You know, if if Swords Fudge is leading to the corner, you know yeah. what what could the the real speedsters from Ireland be doing? Um. I think that was the last of the Irish train runners yesterday. The toaster was a couple of notable trials. Right, hope each went around reasonably well. Again, drifting around the place a bit. Penny's links looked a little bit at sea. Uh, he was travelling around the place. Didn't know what he was doing. Twenty nine forty odd. He did. You'd imagine both of them will come on considerably. Of course, it was his first run for Michael O'Donovan as well. So you know, take all that into into account and. Plenty more to come from Penny's links, but I think it's safe to say we all expect Rayo Beach to improve considerably for that first look around. Uh, on his own and around Toast, you'd be expecting to do a 28, 70 or 60 run um, if, if the others are doing it as fast a dog as there is in training. Uh, all very exciting. Just another mention, um, just got a text actually from Dolores that Boyle Sports Coco is to be bred to Razzle Dazzle Billy. There you are. Um, oh, a, a well-bred type. Razzle Dazzle Billy had made a very, very good start to his stud career mm. back in the day. Um, obviously, he, he died very prematurely and obviously Dolores has one or two straws for herself and Boyle Sports Coco we best wish them the best of luck uh, Groucho's Duke a dog who showed loads of promise the back end of last year he's shown a couple of good lines of form this year in terms of trials and whatnot John Byrne confirmed he's going to go to the English Derby as well so we'll have a few of these you know, dogs that you weren't even considering would go to the English Derby that will turn up and yeah all in all it, it should be a huge huge um Huge, huge team. Uh, Balnabola Ed was confirmed last year, of course, or last week, of course. Um, Pat had asked me to keep quiet until he had trialed him on the Wednesday. So he's since trialed. He will be going to the English Derby. It'd be great to see him back in action. So lots to look forward to, Tommy. You'd expect the Irish to be uh, there with strength in numbers come the quarterfinals. Um, you know, there are one or two very fast dogs in the UK, but I would suggest the weight of numbers might might put it our way. You're uh, Yeah, you were definitely expecting Ian again. <laughs> You've been expecting an Irish winner every year since about uh, certainly nineteen seventy eight. Seventy eight, I would say, since you were born. Sick, sick. I still, I still can't believe we didn't win a one or two years. We lost it, but but that's the way it is. Barry, you'd be taking a bit of even money about the Irish. He's winner, not would you? I, I'd say it sounds like Ian Ian reckons we're going to have record numbers um in the in the latter stages. 
Well, I, I think I think if I, if I remember rightly, in recent years, I think the record number was forty one, but I think that was down to thirty nine by the opening round. I like, like Pat Buckley's talking about thirteen. Graham Holland <laughs> of twelve or fourteen. You know, like they they could nearly reach the record between them. Uh, add in Paul Hennessy, Brendan Matthews, Peter Cronin, John Burns going over, um, Michael O'Donovan going over, and and, and there are more. You know, I, that haven't sort of sort of shown their 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 hand as yet. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we we had quite a few. Um, Liam Dowling hasn't made a noise yet. I don't know whether he arrive or not. Maybe maybe it could be time. I I might might lift up the phone, but uh, be interesting to see if Liam goes over how many he does bring. Um, yeah, but I think there'll be a huge Irish contingent. Whether it's a record number or not, I don't know. Um, but I would expect us to have more than half of the quarterfinals, shall we say? And if you're in mm-hmm. that position, I think you'll be in a. I think it'd be a very strong position come final night. Um, best of luck to anyone that is taking the journey across the toaster uh, and the very best of luck mm-hmm. with them. Um, it's been a busy weekend, Tommy. It'll be another busy weekend this weekend coming. A lot to look forward to. Any Anything in particular you're looking forward to? You know, it's, you know, it is all, the, the Oaks start and I can't wait to see. I can't wait to um, to see the line of even, to be honest about it, because I think they're that good. I'd be frustrated with myself if I can't find something that a bit of, uh, at a price that I could back um, and I don't do an awful lot of betting these days, but uh, I would I would be surprised I couldn't find something to back in that because it's bound to be valued because there's so many good bitches, and there's got to be a bias towards some of them that might 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 you know you know might see some of them neglected slightly in the market. I I always um I always favour the the strong runners because there is such a bias towards the early speed in the Oaks, and there are one or two that will. Absolute guarantee to be in the quarterfinals. You know what I mean? They're just going to be going to take a bomb to keep them out. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that 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 you know that, that could be tempting fate as well. Barry, uh, lots to look forward to. But I I get the sense that you are all systems go for Curry on Saturday night. You'll be getting the lift in. I'd say, will you? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, no, yeah, looking forward to it. Look, um, these fundraiser nights, um, especially if with high profile clubs, and they're going to bring a massive crowd. I know a lot of the, the underage players are going to be parading uh, with the Greyhounds on the night as well. So it's going to be a real, you know, kind of family fun night. And, um, you know, St. Fimbers have enjoyed big success in, in, in Cork County in recent years. So they're going to bring a massive crowd. And obviously, look, we'll be keeping a close eye in the, the competition, the Lee Strand on Friday night and the Oaks. Not a big competition. So look, it's a busy time, but we wouldn't have it any other way. No, no. Great, great, uh, great weekend of racing and a great weekend of racing to come. Of course, we are now at a full stride. The English Derby starts in a week or two. Um, Lots to look forward to, folks. Um, That's it, though, from us on Talking Dogs on a Monday. We'll be back next Monday, but that's it for me. Again, my thanks to the Exile Dub and to uh, to the All Warrior, uh, Barry Drake. I'm sure he's gone out now for a bit of a jog or something. He's a bit of a, he, he's a, bit of a, a closet athlete, Tommy, I believe. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's, he's an athlete full stop. Nothing closet about it. <laughs> <laughs> this as far as I go. What's, the, what's, the, what's your record for the, for the 5K park run? Oh, my record, I suppose, in, in recent times is about 24 minutes. So I, I'd, I'd, I'd say you'd struggle to beat it any in. I tell you, I struggle to beat two hours and 24 minutes. My daughter does the 5K park run. Her record's around 25 minutes, but I told her I want it down to 24 by the end of the summer. Uh, so <laughs> you, you'll have to get your you have to get your, your boots on there, Bar. You're going to say it's a big uphill course or something, I'm sure. Um, four laps. Uh, I can say as my tongue is out after after the first lap. <laughs> Barry Kipchoge. There's an image. Barry Kipchoge. I like that. Uh, That's it, though, from Talking Dogs on this Monday evening, folks. We'll, We'll see you next week. That's it. Good luck. Good evening. God bless.